I'm a British artist, a British painter, but what does that mean? I'm a member of the very last generation of artists who will be able to define ourselves in this way. We've reached a milestone situation in our culture. Children who are born today will be raised in a multicultural society in which they'll have no positive identification with the history of their country. They will feel no bond with any of our former national role models, no connection with any of our traditional national characteristics, and perhaps not even an understanding or an awareness of what the spirit of Britain once was. The names of our nation's heroes are quickly being besmirched by the cultural Marxists that have infiltrated our academic institutions and the media. Lord Nelson, who was once regarded as a great national hero, is now being written off as a white supremacist. In a recent article in the Guardian newspaper, the journalist Afua Hirsch even calls for his statue in the centre of Trafalgar Square to be toppled. So, the way we've traditionally understood ourselves as British people is being radically changed. Every one of our values and beliefs is being re-evaluated, questioned and then swiftly dismissed. And in the place of all these things, we're being presented with bland materialism. We're encouraged daily to reassemble our fractured identities from a new religion called political correctness. In place of the Western values which once directed our lives, all manner of politically motivated agendas are undermining our society and our culture. It was always a source of total bafflement to me, even before I studied the history of art and architecture at the University of London in the late 1980s and early 1990s, that the greatest achievements of Western civilization could be seriously compared to what I regarded as the ridiculous and meritless manifestations of many modern and postmodern artists. I've always been outspoken on this subject and my opinions have often been met with the claim that it's all a matter of taste. Everyone's an artist and anything can be art. And my response has always been, no, that's not true. Because when you stretch your moral and cultural relativism that far, it tends to snap. And what's left behind is immorality and anti-culture. How dare I say such things? How can I be so incredibly judgmental? Well. I feel I can broadcast my opinions more widely today because wherever I go in almost every gallery and art museum, I hear voices saying what was once whispered, now expressed openly, at full volume. We've been conned. That artist is having a joke at our expense. And the change that has happened is that the people expressing these opinions are more confident now. Something has shifted and people are thirsty for art with positive messages rather than work which insists that we witness damaged and sometimes deranged egotistical personalities of contemporary artists. We're also hungering, I believe, for beauty. Because beauty, as the British philosopher Sir Roger Scruton repeatedly tells us, is a value. A value as important as goodness and truth. And I hope we haven't become too cynical to believe in those things. They're the foundation not just of a moral individual, but of a fully functioning society. Plato mentions them as the highest ideals in his dialogues, and they also appear in the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. St. Thomas Aquinas spoke of the unum, bonum, and the verum, the one, the good, and the true, which he refers to as the ens realisium, the most real being. And these are ideals that 20th century writers such as G.K. Chesterton and C.S. Lewis, amongst others, reproposed by stating that truth, goodness, and beauty are the universal aspirations of humanity, which seeks infinite good. They are values that help us undergo life's sufferings and deal with death. I believe if we're to rebuild a sense of our true identity and moral purpose, without which I don't think we can steer ourselves through life or even remain sane, we need to remember and cherish our traditions, hold fast to our traditional values and permit ourselves to make judgments. We've been continually indoctrinated to believe that we're not allowed to say what's really on our minds, even when we know that what we want to say is undeniably true. Some things are just plain bad, 
and other things are transcendentally beautiful and good and true. So take a deep breath, sigh with relief and relax. You no longer have to be afraid of saying what you think.